we have the greatest opportunity of our entire generation in front of us. Renewable energy, energy efficiency, and the storage of that energy represents much more than just the clean energy future. It's also the key to unlocking the potential of our planet. It all starts here. The sun powers our daily lives in the form of fossil fuel hydrocarbons formed over millions of years of life on this planet, all of it created by the sun. The wide majority of the energy we use today in our daily lives has originated from the sun. Whether it be in our gas tank, the electricity we use in our homes and businesses, or the heat that we use to keep ourselves warm, it's all come from one place. This is our most simple truth. The sun, our star, is our original source of energy. Today, we tap into that star using a variety of technological methods. Mining for coal. Here's a mountaintop in Austria. Drilling for oil. These are the oil fields in Bakersfield, California. And drilling for natural gas. And more recently, fracking for natural gas. Now, fossil fuels are the remnants of millions of years of photosynthesis on this planet. When we burn them, we're utilizing the energy that the sun delivered to this planet at that time. But we're also releasing the CO2 that those organisms absorbed. We've also figured out nuclear, which to be fair is a clean energy and very powerful energy source. Now, nuclear has a lot of potential for our planet, and there are a lot of people working on new ways of tapping into nuclear power. But it's very expensive. A lot of time and a lot of energy goes into building a nuclear power plant. And we have to keep in mind that there are risks. We've seen problems that have occurred over the course of time. Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and more recently, Fukushima. The Japanese are spending billions of dollars cleaning this up. And they've got 40 years of work to go. And who can forget this image? This is burned in our minds. This is the Deepwater Horizon spill from 2010, a very traumatic event for the planet. It took months to clean this up. John Muir sums it up with this quote. When one tugs at a single thing in nature, he finds it attached to the rest of the world. As long as we are mining and extracting energy resources from below our feet, and utilizing what's been built here over millions of years, we will always be disrupting something else in our environment. And the only possible way that humanity can somewhat avoid this is by tapping directly into our star. Solar power represents an energy resource that does not need to be mined, and it has a few billion years to go. Over the course of one year, the sun delivers 8.2 million quads of energy to our planet. Presently, across all of humanity, across all resources, we're using 400 quads. The sun definitely has the potential to power all of our planet, if not a big majority of it. The only problem is exactly what we see here in this picture. As the sun goes down, energy generation stops, and that is a real problem. And that is exactly the reason that fossil fuels have been so powerful for us. We can mine fossil fuels in one place, move them to where we need them, and use them on demand. Can't do that really with solar power in a big way yet. Which is why we still have this. These are fossil fuel, gas, coal, power, central power, generation plants. This is the largest contributor to CO2, CO2 in our atmosphere. Now, to be fair, centralized electricity like this has literally gotten us to where we are today. It's enabled humanity to evolve, to innovate. It's powering this room. There are things that we have benefited from in terms of fossil fuels. And the ability of this technology has been very powerful in our lives to get us where we are today. The problem is, it's not sustainable. In fact, just this year, we've crossed over 400 parts per million CO2 levels in the atmosphere. The last time the planet was at 400 parts per million, humans did not exist. 
And we can tell temperature is changing. NASA told us last October was the hottest October ever, followed by the hottest November ever, then followed by the hottest December ever. And this same streak has continued for all of 2016. The wide majority of the scientific community now supports the theory based on evidence from multiple sources that humans are contributing to the climate crisis that we're looking at right now, and fossil fuel consumption is the primary culprit. So how come we're not all just jumping up out of our seats going to do something about this? Even I work in the industry, and I myself have kind of an unemotional response and uncertainty about what to think about these facts. And studies have shown that the abstractness of this issue and the thought that it's distant and it's not our problem today lead us to kind of diffuse the responsibility among the crowd. And we're really left with the dilemma of what are we supposed to do about this? What kind of control do we really have? And I think what really starts, where it really starts is that our awareness of our energy use is very low. For example, KWH, what does it mean? Kilowatt hour is the metric by which our electric utilities charge us for our electric use. Do we really understand what that means? Do any of us really have a feel for how many kilowatt hours we're using in a month or over the course of a year? No. And the fact is that energy in its current form just works. You know, we flip the light switch, lights come on. We go to the gas station, fill up with gas, we get to where we're going. Energy works. I think what really needs to happen here is we need to demand transparency. We need to demand transparency from the people, the businesses that are developing energy resources that we are then tapping into. Because as of right now, we have little choice. What sits at the end of these transmission lines? Do we really understand where the energy is coming from? Most of us don't. Where's the energy coming from to power the lights in this room? There's a missing link here. Every single day we turn on the lights, but the awareness of where that energy is coming from is very low. We need to demand something like this. Everybody knows what this is, the nutrition facts label. And this has been very powerful for humanity. We can now make a choice in the grocery store, which item we're gonna pick based on what's better for us. We need the same kind of idea for energy. We see it now in the products that we buy. When we go shopping for appliances, TVs, even our car, we get data that helps us make the most efficient choice. And this has, again, been very powerful in helping to reduce our energy consumption. But what we don't yet have is something that tells us exactly where our electricity is coming from. I really think that this is what we need something to the effect of a utility electri electricity fax label, something that defines exactly what we're paying, that makes it very clear to us what the fixed costs are, and that also calls out what the utility's investment is in renewables, specifically solar, wind. Tell us exactly where you're investing your money. And to be fair, a lot of utilities do publish this information. If I went out to a website, I could dig in a couple of PDFs and probably find the information I'm looking for. But we're not gonna do that. Consumers want it easy. We need it on the side of the box. This kind of label needs to be on everyone's electricity bill every single month. And let's start from there. Everybody can build an awareness of where we're starting from, and then people who feel really compelled to push the industry forward will feel like they have the information to do so. And that as a society, we can all drive toward more clean, renewable energy. Fortunately, there are a lot of players already investing in this business. It's believed that energy will be the next large industry to be disrupted. Cisco, Microsoft, Apple, all of these companies, big tech companies, they're investing millions of dollars of research into energy business, into the energy business. And it's already turned into products that 
you and I can pick off the shelf for our homes and our businesses that'll help us save energy. Here's a few examples. Everybody knows what these lights look like. Fluorescent lights exist in our churches, our businesses, our schools. They represent approximately 15% of all energy consumed across the planet. These are the largest lighting products. The most quantity is, set, is seen right here in fluorescent lamps, represented by that purple bar. Technology today developed by manufacturers in the LED industry have come out with a product that reduces that fluorescent lamp by 50%. And just recently, retail pricing can be found under $10. This is a really compelling product switch for one of the largest opportunities across the planet. Let me just show you the numbers so you can understand them. When we go from a 32-watt fluorescent lamp to 15 watts, converted to kilowatts, and then multiplied by 12 and 365, which 12 hours a day, 365 days a year, which is common in a commercial application, we're gonna save 74 kilowatt hours a year. Multiplied by a common energy cost seen here, for example, 12 cents in the Midwest, you're gonna save $8.88 per tube. Now, utility companies are also driven by state regulation that put utility rebates and incentives into the market to drive businesses to make these changes. On average, the incentive for these tubes, $6. There is no reason that every small business and every commercial entity in America shouldn't be looking at this right now. It's an immediate investment that they can make that provides a payback of as little as 12 months. It's really powerful stuff. And there are a few more examples just like it. Outdoor pole lighting. You see these every time you go anywhere. They're in parking lots. They're on your streets. Most of them are using metal halide and high pressure sodium lighting. This is like a supercharged incandescent lamp, 400 watts in most cases, producing a lot of heat. Now, they do produce a lot of light too, which is why they're so, you know, they're everywhere. But LED today, can do the same amount of light output, 60% less energy. Really powerful stuff. The numbers, again, look great. $126 annually per lamp, per fixture. Again, utilities are supporting this transition. Now, even in our homes, we can make a change. Something simple. 60-watt incandescent replaced by a 9-watt LED will produce a savings of $6.60 per lamp. You can go out today and find these LED lamps for less than $5, with utility incentives as low as a dollar. If you haven't already converted to LED, please go ahead and do it now. There's also some other powerful changes happening in the industry that I want to tell you about. The price of solar power and the price of modules per watt has reached 30 cents at a wholesale number. This is an incredible decline. This has really enabled the industry to move really quickly in the installation of solar. The only thing really holding back solar in many cases is state regulation that limits a homeowner or a business being able to reap the full benefit. This last summer, Willie Street Co-op here in Madison had a new LED system installed in their store and a solar system installed on the roof. But it wasn't invested in by Willie Street Co-op or the building owner. It was invested in by a third party, somebody by the name of Don Wickert, a local Madison energy guru who wanted to invest his money in something other than the stock market. He partnered with Legacy Solar Co-op and came up with an investment that pays him back like a bond over time. This is a real investment that he was able to make with his money that otherwise would have gone into the stock market. We need to develop a marketplace that enables businesses with open rooftops and investors with free cash to match up and do this kind of thing. This is really where we need to head. And there's one more really big catalyst coming. 
Tesla is building the world's largest battery factory right now in Nevada. When it's completed at the end of next year, it will have doubled the worldwide production of batteries. This is really powerful because if you remember, storage is the missing link. That's really what solar and renewables do not have that fossil fuels can accomplish. And just last night, Solar City and Tesla revealed their solar roof. When you think about going solar right now, you need to think about your roof. In the future, you won't have a roof. Your solar will become integrated. It will be your roof. This is a really exciting technological breakthrough. It is really dependent on good messaging, though. Recently, I used a website called Energy Sage, and this was the message I was delivered. Now, I totally understand the dollar savings number. That is something I can get. But when I start looking at the trees message, 2,263 trees planted, what does that mean? Those trees are not going to get planted. Who's planting those trees? And then 212,000 miles not driven? What? Like, what a waste of space. That's not relevant to me as a homeowner. It's not something that's going to get me to move forward. It's certainly not something that's going to get me to share this message out. Messaging is key. We need to frame this as an investment. Nest is another example. Every month, I get this email from Nest. Nest is trying to get me to conceptualize a ridiculously high number of kilowatt hours saved. Nest has a beautiful product, but this messaging needs to be tied into my actual experience and given me reason to share it with my neighbors and friends. That's the kind of thing that helps energy efficiency spread. We're starting from a really low awareness of where we use or how we use energy, where it's coming from, and really what the costs are associated with it. I really believe that the transparency coming from our energy providers is key to the future here, and that we can really do some amazing things together. The cool thing about it is that the investments made in efficiency and renewables, the savings coming from those can be reinvested into even more efficiency and storage and renewables. That's really powerful when you think about it over the, over the course of the entire planet. On average, here in America, we spend $3,000 per person on energy, in some cases up to $5,000. Just imagine if that money could be redeployed into education, the arts, job training, all sorts of cool things that we could be doing with this money that right now is just kind of floating away. There's a lot of power here, and it is a positive feedback loop that we need to fuel. So I would like to invite all of us to devise our own clean energy investment and figure out what we can do to make an impact here in the future. Thank you.